Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2023 Mazda CX-50 2.5 turbocharged all-wheel drive with a premium plus package. This vehicle is sitting on 245-45 Goodyear tires wrapped around 20-inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Polymetal Gray Metallic and really classy looking color. Sun is not shining very much today, so hopefully you can get an idea of what it's like. So here in the front, a uh, combination of gloss black and flat black. So the gloss black is in this grill area, almost completely gloss black. And then down here is the flat black. There's also a metallic portion there at the bottom. Parking sensors integrated into the body uh, colored portion of the vehicle in here. There's also a front camera located just under the badge. Pretty nicely integrated right there. Uh, there's also a radar adaptive cruise control sensor right here as well. Now there is a portion of this piece right here allows for airflow into the wheel well, uh, but most of it is blocked off. The headlights are a nice LED active bending headlights uh, that illuminate both the low and the high beams out of the same projector. Uh, now there's a secondary, what appears to be a light over here, but I cannot get that to turn on for nothing. I mean, I have turned on all the lights and everything, and it appears that this right here is just for looks. Uh, but this is where the low, the high beams, um, you also have accent light, but only when the when the uh, headlights are turned on will this illuminate. I have a full night video, so you can check it out, see what it's like going down the road and what it looks like at nighttime. It does have pretty good headlights. Uh, the active bending part is a little gimmicky to me, but other than that, I mean, it works fine. It's just a little bit, the movement is just doesn't seem necessary really, uh, but it looks really good and the headlights are, as you're going down the road, it's fine. So looking at the profile, uh, that plastic, that flat plastic we saw on the front continues around each wheel well and a nice wide piece here on the side. And the doors go all the way down to the bottom of the vehicle. And I'll show you what that's about when we get to that point. Uh, but yeah, completely the black cladding is kind of intended to protect the vehicle from road debris and stuff like that. And it kind of gives it a off-roady type look. Uh, the upper portion of the side mirror is a gloss black as well as the pillars here as well, gloss black. And has a little tiny piece of chrome right there, which is interesting. Looks pretty cool. And then metallic roof rails out there at the top. This is what the key looks like. And it's pretty standard Mazda key nowadays. Has the lock, unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate and a panic button uh, there on the edge. But you don't really have anything on the other sides here. Uh, let's go ahead and push the panic button. Has a pretty pretty strong horn. So this key is a proximity key. It's designed to where you can just keep it in your pocket and use the vehicle 100%. Uh, the door locks and door controls are right here. So as long as you have the key on the outside of the door, you can unlock it or lock it. So there's a little dimple right in here. That's for locking it. And as I lock it, uh, there the side mirrors are are set to fold in when I, when I do that. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle. The sensor is back here. As long as the key is on the outside of the door, it'll unlock the door and allow you access to the vehicle. Uh, it also has a physical key location here on the driver's side only. The, the doors go all the way to the very bottom of the vehicle. There's even a seal here as well. And the intention is to keep the this threshold area cleaner than it would other, otherwise be. So if the doors were higher, then this area could potentially get dirty and dirty your clothes as you're entering and exiting the vehicle. Here's the inside of the passenger side door. And it has a combination of black and what they're calling terracotta interior colors. So this is soft touch here, like injection molded. This is like a vinyl, soft vinyl type material. Same thing with the armrest here. And it's nice and cushy, but Right in here as, as well as a, uh, another soft touch as well. Check out that stitching. That's looking pretty nice. But the rest of the door is a hard touch. So hard touch down here. There's a large pocket at the bottom. See a bottle holder and large areas there. 
Uh, this kind of passes through here, so you can grab it, grab it all with the handle nicely. It has the Bose sound system, which sounds really good. There's a little speaker right in here, as well as right here. So the seats are here on the passenger side as a power seat. It goes up, down, tilt, and everything. Uh, which is unusual. Some some passenger seats just kind of like just go forward and back and tilt the back, uh, but this one does have the height adjustment as well. And really nice terracotta seats. They call them terracotta. It's like a baseball glove or whatever. Really impressive looking. Uh, it has stitching. It has perforations. Uh, these are heated and ventilated seats. It has large ventilations there. Uh, little um, perforations for the ventilation to flow through, which is nice. And then that stitching there in the center is looking really nice. These are very impressive looking seats. There's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. It does have the, the, the floor mat that snaps in place so it's not sliding around on you. Plenty of leg room here in the front. Very simplistic design. Uh, this is a hard touch surface. Glove compartment is not locking has a smooth plastic in there and you see it has like a little shelf tiered shelf soft touch touch surface here is kind of like a vinyl material like we saw on the door and it has a stitching in the middle just like we saw on the door uh, the vents are there and then you have a soft touch like injection molded type non-reflective dash So the opening here in the front door is really easy to get in and out of. The headroom is, is great. Uh, the height off the seat off the ground is a nice, the seat in relationship to the ground is like perfect. Just get in and out, really comfortable. There is a little tiny bit of a ledge there to get your leg over, but it's not really a big deal. The swing of the door is nice as well, but check out the swing of the door in the back. In the back, it swings out perfectly. It's almost at a 90 degree angle. Uh, which really helps out because you do have a little bit of tapering right here, a smaller threshold, but you got lots of headroom. Uh, but being able to swing that door really wide uh, helps you a lot with getting in and out of vehicle. I wish more manufacturers would do that. So the inside of the back door, uh, not quite as fancy as the front door. So the front door had stitching and stuff and soft touch surfaces. The back door, you got one terracotta here and some soft touch here, and the rest is a hard touch. Even up here, here and down here is all hard touch. So you can see a small threshold here. So this part right in here kind of gets in the way a little bit when you're getting in. So having that wide swing really helps out. Really impressive looking seats. So this is basically a bench seat with the latch system for car seats or isofix and it has the armrest with cup holders can move that out of the way a little bit of contours there for the seats but it's basically a bench seat the back does fold down so you can add to your cargo space the leg room is halfway decent back here um, because the floor goes way down in there this seat is not all the way back uh, but you know so it does limit your leg room depending on how tall the front passengers are and there's a pocket on the back of this passenger seat heated seats back here you can see the controls as well as usb charge ports here as well and climate control vents but look at this huge hump in the middle so uh that's something that you have to consider if you're if you're planning on having a center passenger they'll have to deal with that Take a look at the back of the vehicle. It has the roof rails here, a little black, gloss black, shark fin antenna right there at the top center. Uh, third brake light is right in there in the rear spoiler integrated. Rear wiper. 
And the taillights are really nice. You should check out my night video. Uh, nice, strong LED tur uh, turn signals and, and taillights and brake lights and reverse lights and all that stuff. Uh, really, really impressive LED system here for the taillights. Not so impressive for the front. You'll see why. And also the interior, and you'll see why in the night video. Uh, but it does have a backup camera this way over here for some reason. It's not in the center. So for some reason they put it there. This has the 360 camera system. So you got the camera in the front, the camera in the back, and then there's one on the underside of each side mirror. And so I'm not sure why they offset it and have it in this low position next to the tag, like as like as an aftermarket product or something. Um, but it works halfway decent uh, on the on the screen. It is a high re resolution and everything, and they did a pretty decent job of stitching it together. But it just seems like it would work better if they centered it and put it in a higher, more integrated position. And also, it'll just look less tacked on, I guess. Parking sensors across the back. Now back here, they're integrated into this black portion. It has the dual exhaust tips. Trying to give it a sporty look. But it has these vents back here that are just sealed off. So they're just kind of intended to just match the front. Uh, but they actually don't do anything. They look pretty cool though. Now we do have a power lift gate and we can use the key or we could push a button under here and lift it up. You have the seats occupied with passengers. This is what the cargo space looks like, and there's a pretty good amount of space, a lot of space. Uh, there is a light here on this, on this left side, LED, nice and bright. Uh, there's also a bag holder here as well as here. This is the ability to lower the seats, but it's kind of a combination to do that, so I'll show you that in a second. Same thing with that, that's for the right seat. And then you have the bag holders here and here. You also have tie downs that are connected to the actual vehicle uh, there and there on the other side there is a 12 volt power supply here on the left side a little storage area on both sides kind of dished out now this floor lifts up it's not latched in place or anything it's just laying there uh, it lifts up and you have a spare tire and also the Bose uh, subwoofer is integrated in here as well now this is a full diameter spare tire, but it is a temporary. Uh, there's the jack and tools as well. Now, if you need to add to your cargo space, let's say you wanted to keep this seat in position and you want to fold down this seat. Let's say you're putting a big box back here or whatever and the seat's getting in the way. So you can use this and it pull, you pull that and it releases it. Sometimes it'll move forward a little bit, but usually you still have to go around there and move it. Uh, but even if it does fold down, let me show you something. Even if it does work as intended and it fl flips forward a little bit. All right, didn't even fully release. All right, so there we go. So it's uh, released now. And let's say it flips forward a little bit. Well, right there is where it's gonna stop because you, you, the front seats get in the way of it folding down. So now you have to go to the front seat and you gotta move the front seat forward enough to allow that to go all the way down. So it's not like you could just simply pull this lever and it gets out of your way. You, there's this whole combination of events that have to happen uh, in order for that seat to fold all the way down. So, you know, it's not as convenient as it may seem to have a lever back here. Some vehicles have this lever and you just pull it and there's enough room in the vehicle to where it just flops down and gets out of your way and it's real quick and simple and easy. Uh, this one, you know, it really doesn't add much to it because unless that seat in the front is all, you know more in a forward position than my driving anyway position and the seats actually move forward sometimes they do maybe this one will okay so there we go there's an example of when it works perfect because the front seat already moved forward earlier uh and this actually went down so 
So there's an example of when it works and when it doesn't work so well. But when you do fold them down, look how much space you have. Just a ton of space. It's just wide open space here. And it's not a completely flat floor, but it's, it's close enough to where you can put some big stuff in here. When you lower the power lift gate, there's two buttons here. You can use the key if you want, but there's two buttons right here. One is to simply just lower the power lift gate. The other one is to lower the power lift gate, then lock the vehicle. So that's a nice to have. So you get your stuff out, you get your groceries or whatever you're getting out, hit the lock button and it closes down and it secures the vehicle for you. The fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's not locking. Uh, you just push it and open it up. It does have a traditional cap, tether, and a place to hang the cap here while you're pumping gas. Starting it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, you just press and hold the brake and push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. There's the accelerator, pivots at the bottom, brake pedal, and a big foot rest, which is nice. Pretty good amount of leg room here as well. Let's take a look under the hood. To raise the hood, there is a latch, basically right here in the center, maybe a little bit to the right of center. Just reach in, move it to the left, and lift up. And you just lift it up a little bit and it'll go the rest of the way by itself. There is insulation on the underside of the hood. There are seals around the outside of the engine compartment. Insulated battery here on the right side. The firewall is almost completely uh, insulated back there which is good because there's a lot of heat back there because it has a turbo. It says a turbo, a 2.5 liter four cylinder with the turbo in the back. You can see it right here. It has heat shielding around it as well as insulation on the firewall. And it's paired to a six speed automatic transmission. Now the automatic transmission, some people like it, some people don't. I kind of like it. it. It feels kind of traditional. Uh, shifting and um, accelerates nicely. This vehicle is a good driving vehicle. Um, as far as the steering, the acceleration, the cornering, the braking, all that stuff is really enjoyable to drive. The rear cross traffic alert and blind spot detection system uh, indicator is here on the side mirror. It's that little triangle there. It lets you know when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Uh, the inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. There's the door lock controls, uh, the power windows, uh, the side mirrors, you can adjust them there. You just pick a side. You can also power fold them in as well. Now the windows here are one touch up and down here in the front and they're um, not laminated. So it has a traditional glass. In the back, it's one touch up and down, but you see it doesn't go all the way down. So the driver's seat has to one up the passenger typically. So it does have uh, the tilt, the up and down, tilt back here, and also the uh, lumbar adjustments as well. So that's a two-way lumbar adjustment. Really impressive looking seats. They don't really work for me as far as comfort, but it all depends on your particular preference and you have to try it out for yourself, I guess. To the left of the steering column, there is a few, quite a few buttons here. So you, you have the ability to raise the power lift gate here. You have two presets for the power seat and that's how you set them. Uh, this is to turn off the, uh, some of the safety features. So like say, if you want the blind spot detection system off, you can hit that button and it turns off, uh, quickly turns off uh, some of the features there. Now this one is to turn on the camera system, which is kind of an odd place to put it. It'd be better if it's over next to the shifter, but that's where they put it. Parking sensors, this is how you turn off the parking sensors if they're beeping at you and you're not, um, you know you're close to something, but you just don't wanna hear it. Uh, this is the traction control. You can turn it off, default will be on. So if you need to spin tires, you can turn that off. And then this is idle stop. You can turn it off, default will be on. So this will be what turns the engine off when you come to a complete stop. Not a fan of that, so I turn it off typically, if I remember. It also has tilt and telescoping steering column, and you lock it in place here. Before I put the shade up to cover the windshield, it does have a heads-up display, and it's very sharp, very clear. Uh, the problem I've had with this vehicle is every time I aim a camera at it and try to focus it, it just looks like crap. So you just kind of have to take my word for it that it is a very sharp and clear heads-up display. 
that gives you all the relevant information and you it's not distracting or anything like that once you adjust it the, the brightness the way you like it it is really good day or night it's really fantastic one of the better uh, heads up displays that I've seen so I'm sitting in the driver's seat I have the driver's seat all the way back all the way down just to give you an idea of the potential leg room here I'm six feet tall and it's good. I mean, I do have to pull the seats a little bit forward because the angle of the footrest and you know just reaching the pedals uh, is required to be a little bit forward. But um, so if you're slightly over six feet tall, should have no problem driving this vehicle. Now this right here sometimes gets in the way depending on how I'm positioned because it's just a hard plastic right here and it kind of protrudes out slightly. Uh, it's not as back, bad as other, uh, some Mazdas are like, it's just like impeding your leg, but uh, this one's okay. It's, it's definitely not a big problem or anything. But I just want to mention that depend, you definitely want to test the seats and also the seating position here with your legs and stuff like that for that, that and just pay attention to that. And also the seat comfort when you test drive it to make sure it's going to be something that you're willing to uh, drive around, especially if you're planning on doing long trips and stuff. The steering wheel is very nice feeling. This leather wrapped um, comfort is nice. It's very soft and it has like the surface texture, the smooth but grippy and just very impressive. I really like the, the way this, this steering wheel feels. It's really nice. Uh, the softness is also really appreciated too because it's not like it's digging into your bones while you're driving for a long period of time. And it's real easy to drive and steer and everything like that. So really well done. Uh, so there's the buttons on the steering wheel here on the right side uh, is the cruise control so you can once you turn it on you can set up and down resume cancel you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you by toggling this up and down so this is up and down and then you have uh, this button in the center to push in so that's the cancel that's the resume uh, you have this button and it it appears that it is a lane keeping assist, but it's actually just lane departure warning. Uh, it doesn't turn the steering wheel at all. Uh, it'll just basically, you turn it on, it'll just let you know if you go over the lanes, that kind of thing. Now these buttons around here sometimes are kind of hard to see during the day, especially if it's the sun shining or whatever. Um, at nighttime you can see them great because they're backlit. Here on the left side uh, is the volume for the radio, so up and down volume. And then you can change the, the tracks by pu pushing this up and down, or the radio station, depending on how, you, or the r presets for the radio station, depending on how you, uh, what you're playing. And then down here is the, like I said, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. Got to get at the right angle, voice recognition, and also answer the phone. Uh, and then right here is to hang up, and then right here is an info button. Uh, so this is also to change the source when you push in on that. Now the info button uh, corresponds with the screen. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but windshield wiper controls are here and it does have an automatic uh, rain sensing windshield wipers that turn on uh, and they, they work pretty decent as far as you know detecting rain. And then here on the left side is a turn signal but you also have the, um, you have the headlight switch. So you have off, automatic parking lights and headlights and also the automatic high beams can be turned on or off here and it is the headlights are pretty good uh, you have to check out my night video because there's pluses and minuses throughout this whole vehicle as far as uh, driving it and also at nighttime and all that stuff now it does have the paddle shifters back here so you can change through the six gear ratios um, plus and minus and if you accidentally press one you can always press and hold the plus and it'll turn the uh, the manual driving off the dimmer switch for the interior gauges is located here resetting the trip is it located over here button there and the gauges are really nice as far as visibility uh, black background bright white lettering popping out you have the tachometer rpm gauge there to the left uh, on the right there's the fuel gauge engine coolant temperature uh, your range the average miles per gallon here on the left side there's your odometer now right in here is a speedometer and as you're driving it'll actually show you uh, it'll pop up and read the signs using a camera in the front and let you know what the speed, speed limit is it'll also uh, if you're going over the speed limit it turns the speedometer needle red and lets you know hey you're going over the speed limit and also it'll give you a little a little mark here 
where you have the cruise control set. So that's another cool thing. So when you resume, you know where you're going to go to. And because the, how I can do that is because this is a digital screen. Uh, so this from here, here, all the way to here is a digital screen. And they just put a physical dial around uh, the screen to make it look like a gauge. But that's actually a, this, it's not a physical gauge like here on the sides. So it can change the view. So when I push info, the info button, we get a different information there on the inside, which is cool. Driver information, we can change the view to this, digital speedometer, and the status of the, the cruise control system, the lane keeping, the lane departure warning system, and also the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, uh, that kind of thing. And it'll, it'll, if there's a vehicle, if it detects a vehicle, it shows like a little picture of a vehicle in there as well. Push the info button again. Uh, it turns all that stuff off and you just have the regular speedometer. But you can see it's like, uh, it kind of cycles through. So the touch screen is over here. No, it's actually, it, it does have the capability from what I understand to use the touch screen. But it's not actually primarily a touch screen. Uh, the touch screen portion is only like in the Apple CarPlay, I think. And I don't have access to that. So apparently it does have the capability to be a touch screen but it's just typically not. How you use the touch, how you use the screen is you use this, this dial, these dials here and these buttons. And it's not, it, there's a little bit of a learning curve, okay? So you do have to get the, set, the vehicle set up the way you want it and kind of practice, practice with these buttons before you start driving because it's, it's not as intuitive necessarily if you're not familiar with it. But once you're familiar with it, if you're like a Mazda fanboy, and you've, you know, you're, this is what you're accustomed to. You could probably be very proficient with it. So, you know, it all depends. Um, but if you're, this is something, a new, you're, you're just getting into Mazda and you're using these for the first time, you definitely want to practice with them, find out where things are, that kind of thing. Okay, so right now it's showing the navigation screen. And so that's the button right here, little, little arrow there. That's the navigation. This button is to take you to the audio. And so right now, uh, it's not connected to my phone. So it's saying, push the big button for a menu. So we can push that. And then we can go to source list, play black controls, Bluetooth settings, and audio settings. Now, I have the camera about halfway between my eyes and the screen. So if you're back here driving, your eyesight has to be pretty decent uh, as far as this range, you know, typically uh, as you get older, there's ranges that are closer to you that are a little bit harder to focus on. You can see far away fine. You can see super close up fine maybe, uh, but there's some distances like these medium ranges that are somewhat of an issue. So that's another thing that you have to check on to make sure this vehicle is good for you. Um, so I'm going to put the camera about halfway so you can see how, you know, it's still not super big to see. But I can see it fine. It's not an issue for me, but I'm just saying that some people might be an issue. Okay, so the source list, you have FM, AM, satellite radio, Pandora, Bluetooth, USBs, uh, two of them, phone connectivity, and then, of course, you can turn this whole thing off. Now, an Apple CarPlay Android Auto is a separate deal, and it's wireless as well. Now, the way this works... The turning this dial is, a, is that's how I'm making going up and down on this menu is turning this dial right here now you can hit this back button on certain screens to get out but you see there's a little arrow there to the left I can just simply just bump this to the left this whole knob to the left to go back I can bump it to the left again to go back uh, but it reaches a certain point where you can't go back anymore because we're in we're in this menu system uh, if we want to get to the main menu, we hit this home button. So we push that home button, and then now we have the main menu, which is all text-based. We have information, entertainment, communication, navigation, and then settings. So all of them are right there. You're not scrolling uh, up and down. They're all already on the screen. You're just going up and down to make a selection. And you notice it gets large when you select it. So that's that's good. I like the fact that it enlarges it a little bit so you can see exactly which one you're on and you don't have to, um, it's not a guessing game. Now look how little, that little tiny clock over there 
that was bigger. There's a lot of a lot of screen space that it can, you know, they're not utilizing. But anyways, that's the way they did it. Uh, so let's go to. Uh, so communication is your phone. Information. This will be about the vehicle. Fuel efficiency monitor. Uh, we can see that and see what we're doing as far as fuel uh, efficiency and the idle stop status and stuff like that. Let's go back out of that. Uh, travel link satellite radio travel link has the ability to find gas stations and uh, lodging and food and all kinds of stuff so that would be under the information and then a vehicle status monitor um, so this will be you know when it's time to change the oil that kind of stuff all right entertainment this would be like the radio you know uh, or Bluetooth or uh, stuff like that communication uh, so this would be the is for your, your phone so like say call history contacts text messages uh, that kind of thing you can also call roadside assistance here as well and then of course you have favorites uh, navigation this is where you can go in and view the map you push the menu button which is the big dial down add a destination um, you can go in here and add you change the settings which is very important change the map view and all that stuff can also have a split screen so you can have a portion of the screen navigation and the rest of it radio that kind of thing and then last but not least is the settings and this is where if you wanted to adjust the heads-up display you'd have to go click pull hit the settings hit that hit that hit if let's say you want to change the brightness hit that and then turn the dial to adjust the brightness so something that's not as easily done while you're driving because there's very there's several sub menus um, in order to make adjustments on the heads-up display so stuff like that is a little bit annoying especially if you're not accustomed to it so the settings you see kind of like uh, the basics here okay so that's kind of a quick rundown of what the screens all about now, I'm not going into Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, because that's a different deal, and also that you know, it's customizable for you and all that stuff. And also, only have an uh, Android; I don't have an Apple. So down here is the climate control system, and now this one, you know, the high trim, it has the dual, dual zone, so driver and passenger. They're synced right now. You can see the temperatures right there. Fan speed adjustments: where you want the air to blow, front and rear defrosters recirculate the air. Uh, there's also cooled and heated seats, and it's a three-stage, high, medium, and low. There's also on and off for the heated steering wheel. Now, some stuff is obscured. I like that light down there. It's underneath the knob, so you can't really tell when it's on sometimes. The passenger heated and cooled seats, uh, heated and cooled, and then the four-way flashers are there. has traditional knobs for the temperature gauge, which is nice to have. Um, instead of like trying to push a screen or something like that. Now speaking of obscured buttons, uh, the buttons on the steering wheel are not always visible, but you notice there's these uh, buttons over here. And while you're driving, uh, let's say you wanted to push the camera, let's say you're getting close to a parking spot and you want to look, um, you kind of have to go like this over here and then down and then you can, there's the, the there's the camera button, but to, to release the, the power lift gate, it's way down here. So it's like you kind of have to scrunch down and, and look for the button because there's lots of buttons over here. You can't just feel your way around. So, you know, something to think about uh, with the, the location of the buttons and how visible they are. Like it, they, these buttons are on reflective surfaces. So as I'm driving, I really can't see this these buttons most of the time. So I have to just memorize what buttons does what. Okay, so there is a 12 volt power supply here, a rubberized little storage area right here, cup holders, um, and then here's the shifter. And let's go ahead and put it in reverse. When we put it in reverse, a couple things will happen. One is the parking sensors turn on, uh, but you also have this camera system. And the camera system and the resolution and everything is good. Uh, so it's showing the, the rear view, and you can see you know, half the tag there and stuff like that because of the location of the camera. Uh, but they also have this top-down view, and it's really a pretty 
pretty good resolution and everything. You can see pretty darn good. They do a pretty decent job of that camera system. Uh, when you look at when you look at it close, especially. The only issue I have is that when you're driving like this, it's like it's tiny, so it's not. It's useful. Don't get me wrong, but it could be more useful if the screen was bigger or they utilize the screen. Uh, space a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe maybe a taller screen. I'm not sure but the way it is now um, you know, it's it's good, but uh, It's just kind of not taking advantage of that resolution on it on a small screen like that Now when we put it in drive we can have a front view camera by pushing the camera button Which is conveniently located way over here behind the steering wheel. That's hard to get to and then now you can see the front view and we can see the top down view. So when you're in, the camera's already up, you can press the camera button again and cycle through two, three different views total. So this is one view. Uh, the next one would be a super wide view. And since we're going in drive, it's the front side instead of the back. Uh, and then the third one is just focusing on the sides of the vehicle. So there's three different views there. And you cycle it again, it gets out of the camera, uh, but Basically, the or it goes back to the original as well. All right, manually, if you want to change the gears, instead of the paddle shifters, you can just bump it over here and downshift and upshift by, it's kind of like a ratchet shifter here, and change to the six gear ratios that way. And as a pretty traditional trans transmission, it's not, uh, six gears is enough typically, but um, the way it shifts is, is kind of, kind of, kind of refreshing in a way because some vehicles have a lot of gears and they kind of hunt for gears sometimes or I don't know it's just it, it it seems to work well you know it seems to work good so this right here is the the drive mode and as you push that down or up either way you have different drive modes here sport normal and then off-road so since this is an all-wheel drive vehicle you can kind of you know tell the vehicle hey we're going on some slippery surfaces stuff like that, um, then it'll focus more on the off-road and, and engage the all-wheel drive system. Uh, it'd be more active than passive. Typically, it just doesn't kick in unless you have, until it has some wheel slippage, but with the off-road, it'll probably kick in, you know, it'll be more active, like it m might just be on all the time. I don't have any experience with the off-road as far as actually taking this vehicle off-road, um, but that's what I can assume based on you know the type of vehicle it is I wouldn't go on in like severe Jeep trails or anything with it but it does have some off-road capability so there's sport normal and off-road there's your drive modes all right so we saw this this big dial and that's how you it, that's how you use that now over here is the volume for the radio so you can turn that and increase or decrease the volume but also to change to the tracks or the presets on the radio you can bump it to the right or bump it to the left so forward and back uh, depending on what you're doing you press it in if you want to mute the radio or pause whatever you're playing now this button is like a wild card type button you can set this up on the screen in the settings to what that does so there's different options that you can assign this button to electronic parking brake you engage it by lifting it up and engages the rear wheels hold the brake and push it down to release it. And then this is the auto hold function. And when this is turned on, it'll hold the brake for you when you come to a complete stop. So if you're at a stop sign or a stoplight for an extended period of time or in traffic, uh, you come to a complete stop, you can let go of the, the brake and then it will not move until you push the accelerator. So it just holds the brake, you know, brake hold, auto hold. Okay, so here's the armrest and it's pretty soft. And it has like this center line, which is cool. Kind of gives you a property line if you're sharing it through, with your passenger. It actually has these two buttons here and here. So let's push that one. You see that side lifts up. Push this one. This side lifts up. And then you have this compartment here. And it is, it goes in there a little ways. It has like a little felt lining. It's hard to see, so I put my business cards in here. There's also USB ports in here as well for charging. Right in there. They're not there's no lights or anything in here, so even during the day it's kind of hard to see. 
You gotta check out my night video. There is a solution to this though. Okay, so the rear view mirror, it's an auto dim rear view mirror. Uh, so it's actually auto dimming right now because I have the shade up and it's covering the light sensor, which is back here. But it also, when that auto dims, the driver's side, side mirror uh, is auto dimming as well. You can turn that feature off in the settings if you want to. Uh, home light garage door opener controls are here. Interior lights, you have these like uh, quick access reading lights here that's shine right in your lap, really convenient. You can turn on all the interior lights with that button and it's actually backlit at night, which is nice. That's a little spoiler for the night video. Uh, this is for the sunroof, we'll get to that in a minute. There's the place to put some glasses or shades and has like a very thin felt lining on the inside. The visors have mirrors, lights, you kind of turn on the light when you open up the mirror, that's pretty cool. And then a little clip right here. Uh, but they do not slide out. They don't like slide out and move. Um, they have this little extender right here, which I kind of like better because it adds to your coverage instead of just shifting your coverage. So if you have it over here, you can go do that number. Uh, and it has like a vinyl type material on it, so it's fairly easy to clean. And then the headliner is a cloth and it's a bright color, which is nice. Sometimes they'll put the visors have like uh, cloth material and if you're touching it all the time, it kind of gets dirty and it's not as easy to clean. This material should be way easier to clean. So the sunroof, it has a shade that covers 100% of the light, which is nice. Uh, and you simply just pull back on the switch there and it'll pull back the shade all the way. All right, so now if we want to put the sunroof back, just pull back on that button again and I'll go ahead and open that up. Pull it back again, as far back as it goes. Push it forward. If we want to tilt up, we just push up on it and it'll tilt up a little bit. And then push forward again if we want to close the shade. So that one button, this one button right here, handles all that. Looking at the visibility there in the back, uh, you do have little windows back there and fairly wide pillars in the far back, but it's not really a big deal. I hadn't had any issues with visibility really, uh, especially considering it has so much technology, the, the full camera system, the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, parking sensors, all that stuff really <laughs> help out a lot. Um, but really it's not really, the, it's not a big deal, especially once you get used to it. I like the way you can have the electronic parking brake turn on when you park, put the vehicle in park. And when you put it at a park, it automatically turns off the electronic parking brake. So right now, um, being able to see the camera system, which is nice, and we can see pretty much both ways behind the vehicle as well as, as immediately uh, around the vehicle. The stitching is a little bit off uh, where the curb lines up and stuff, which is, it's okay, you can still see, but it's not as as premium as say other brands where they have it like perfectly stitched nicely. But yeah, having that, that camera to reference as a, you know, just to have certainty of where you're at, make sure there's no kids or anybody around you, uh, that kind of stuff. Now I'm on dry pavement, so the all-wheel drive system is basically going to be the same as the two-wheel drive system as far as the driving experience. Now I'm going to turn off the idle stop. It's not turning the engine off right now, but it will in the future. Uh, it kind of randomly does it depending on the climate control and stuff, but I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. And I have the, the climate control down to the lowest fan level because it is pretty hot today. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the cooled seat to the lowest level as well. So if you hear any like fan noise, that's what it is.
So for a four cylinder, it's really enjoyable to drive. Uh, it has that acceleration, it has really good handling. And the transmission is, I like it anyways. It's not perfect, but. It's just a regular old transmission. And I think that's why I like it, it's kind of traditional. So the cruise control set, uh, I can set the distance you know, between me and the vehicle in front of you, which I'm going to go ahead and put it at the furthest distance. And it does a pretty decent job of keeping you at a safe distance. Uh, some vehicles are just a little bit too close for comfort, for my comfort anyway. Uh, but this one does a pretty decent job of that. Once it sees the car, it has a little indicator there on the heads-up display letting me know that it does see a car in front of me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and push the brake now. But yeah, it does see the car, in it'll let you know when it sees the car. It also lets you know when it sees the lines uh, with the lane departure warning system. It's kind of odd because it has the it has the little steering wheel as if it's gonna turn the steering wheel for like a lane keep, keeping assist, but it doesn't. So it's showing me the speed limit. It's showing me what my uh, cruise control is set at, my, and then my current speed as well on the heads-up display. And on the gauge here, it's showing a little red mark, uh, showing that I'm going over the speed limit by slight, like two miles an hour. So it kind of gives you that information there. But yeah, as far as just kind of like, you know, chilling out and relaxing, driving, it's a comfortable vehicle. The seat's a little bit too firm, but as far as just everything else, to me, this kind of gets in the way and the seat is a little bit too firm. Uh, but the steering wheel is nice and comfortable. The, the ride quality is pretty decent. You know, it's not, not bad at all. Now I've had... <laughs> Some vehicles are like really, really bad. So this one is, is kind of like medium, I guess. But on a road like this, it's fine. It's, this road is nice and smooth, relatively speaking here. It has a really good linear feel. Like, it, I don't know, there's something about it that it feels like you're the steering and the control you have, cornering, you just, it's very precise. And the turning radius is really awesome too. So it's one of those vehicles that, you know, there's not like any, like, it's not like any gimmicks or anything. It's just very fun and enjoyable to drive because the acceleration and all that with the turbocharger. Uh, the transmission is kind of, you know, just plain regular transmission. Uh, but the, as far as driving it, you feel like you're in, in, in sharp, precise control. And the braking system is, is good. You know, it's not like a super great one, but it's not bad at all. And it doesn't feel like a boat, you know. Cornering and braking and accelerating, accelerating. Accelerating, you get a little bit of a rock. Uh, it does rock a little bit, accelerating back. But as far as braking and cornering, it's pretty level, it's pretty straight.
So this road has a little bit of bumps on it, so hopefully you'll be able to tell uh, the difference here as far as the noise and the ride quality. Like I mentioned, the turning radius, radius is really nice. I feel like you can just turn that wheel all the way around. No problem turning around.
Anyways, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this vehicle and some of the features that it has if you drive one or if you drive a Mazda in general because it's very similar to a lot of Mazdas as far as the way the features are designed and you know the, the different the gauges. I mean, a lot of it's very similar to other Mazdas. So if you have a Mazda, uh, you can let me know what you think of this one in the comment section or your, share your experience with yours. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.